Matt Tate, and Programme Leader for Interactive Media and Games. And I'm Bill Saunders and I lead the film course here at Braintree Campus. The purpose of this video is to give you an insight to what we do here on the Braintree Campus for our media programmes, uh, as well as show you some equipment, show you around the building, um, as well as give you an idea of what the expectations are for starting on one of our courses. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you on a brief tour of our department, show you some of the things that we have, some of the rooms you'll be working in, as well as show you how you're going to be approaching your projects and some of the coursework that you'll be doing with us this year. Um, just wanted to create a short video just to show you a tour of our building. Obviously due to social distancing at the minute, I thought it would be nice you can have a look online. So we'll take you through. Um, this is our new um, block built at the college. We'll take you through to where media takes place. Um, all the doors at the college are all what we call mag lock doors, which you can only access with your pass when you get on enrolment. Um, but what's special about this door into the media department is you can only get access to the door if you are a media student or staff member. As you come through into the area, um, we've got our media lab. So this is the first thing that you come into. So this is a kind of creative study area where you can sit, um, finish off design work, have a chat to your peers before you come into session. We have a print station over in the corner, um, so you never need to leave the area if you need to print anything or scan anything in. Um, we've got a bit of a retro games collection that some of it's in storage at the minute, but some's out. We've got uh, Game Boys, um, Mega Drive, PlayStation, the original PlayStation PS1, um, as well as Xboxes and various other things that we encourage you to use uh, outside of session time you can play. There is a quiet study area uh, over in the corner. Um, so any time outside of normal lessons, you can sit with your headphones on, complete work that you need to. We'll talk about those in a second. In the corner here, we've got a little kitchenette area, um, which has tea, coffee making facilities, a sink, and also a fridge. Um, so you can store your lunch in there, any food that you want to bring in, um, or milk for hot drinks and uh, or other soft drinks that you want. Uh, we've got our first classroom. Uh, T008, where we have in every room a uh, state-of-the-art 4K interactive um, whiteboard where we can stream stuff straight to the board, we can show your work on there, um, and it's, it's a really nice bit of kit. The machines in this room and as well as in the study areas outside of the block all run off of our super server here at the college. So these are basically just conduits and what that means is on their own, they're not that amazing, but when they're powered by the server, they act like a two, three thousand pound gaming PC. The good thing about that is, is that with your logins, you can access the same power remotely from home. So you, if you have any standard desktop or laptop, you can access all of our software and the power of these machines at home. Um, so if you want to complete your work on Unity, Maya, any of the Adobe suites, you can do so from your own home. Um, so these are really fast machines that we've got access to. It is good because in case of another lockdown situation or part lockdown situation, it means you can still do your, co uh, your course remotely, unlike any other college locally, um, which is really, really, really handy. Um, as we spoke about the mag locks on the building, we can control how many people are in this block at one time, therefore we can limit the traffic coming through and make it a safer environment for you when you return this September. Um, this is going to be set up as some table space for you to do uh, laptop work, design work. You can see just about in the floor down here there are some uh, network points and PowerPoints for your laptops and there's normally two big sofas here that you can sit on uh, and relax in sessions when you're not in. We've got another room here, um, which is another quiet study room. Uh, you can have a look in there now. You can basically book this out and complete um, any of your work in there at your own time. Um, we have our main kind of lab in here, uh, which has got high spec uh, gaming VR ready machines in. Um, we've also quite a nice little view out to the woodlands, which is always quite nice. So it's our other main uh, study room within the department. 
This is T005, which is our TV studio. Now, even though we refer to it as a TV studio, it's used by both games and film students. So for game students, we use it for live animation capture, um, for our 2D and 3D animations for characters. We're gonna be using it for motion capture, and we also use it for VR mapping. So when we're creating our VR games, we set up all the cameras in here with our VR headsets and we can run all of our models and games in here. Um, this will also be where we're hosting our eSports events. From this September, we're setting up an eSports team here at the college um, in our department that will be entering into the national championships. Um, so we'll be doing a live TV broadcast of all of our eSports games in here. For film, Obviously it's more traditional, we'll be using it for lighting workshops, um, camera workshops, using green screen obviously in here. Eventually we'll have a big green screen backdrop in here as well. Um, but we do live TV broadcasts of actual uh, events in here once a week. All of the cameras are the brand new Blackmagic Design 4K cameras. We've got an auto queue so we can do actual news pieces, pieces to camera um, that we run from our uh, studio in here. Um, and then we've got our control room that is the main sort of hub of the studio um, where we can control all the cameras, all of our microphone phone inputs. Um, this is a really, really nice little bit of kit. We have a lot of live briefs that we work to. Um, and as I said, we do a live show every two weeks from the studio. This kit is all portable. We take it out to do sports events such as football, broadcast, um, music events, uh, graduation events, things like that. So the course is highly practical, but it's also, there's a lot of work experience stuff that goes on. We work with a lot of clients in film and in games. Um, so it's a nice little space that we have in here uh, for you to use at any time that you want. Um, also, it's not just for your classwork. If you want to have a vlog, or you want to do a little TV show and play around with it yourselves, you can book it anytime and use it to do your live broadcasting. We live broadcast to YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, um, all different kinds of things like that we can go to. And we have our office space where we have all of our kit that you can book out and our staff members are there. Um, as you've probably seen from our website, we have um, design graphics tablets for our game students. For film, we've got Ronin Steadicams, um, we have Blackmagic Pocket 4K cameras, Sony Broadcast cameras, uh, we've got Phantom uh, drone, 4K drone, um, we have Rhino, Rhino sliders that uh, you can get really nice solid movement on, as well as a load of other equipment. Uh, we're the most stocked uh, department in Essex as far as uh, film and games equipment. Um, so it's just a quick little sort of tour through during lockdown to see what it's like, what you're going to be coming into in September. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact us um, by ringing up reception and asking for a member of staff. Along your film course this year you're going to be studying a range of units which are going to help you build up all of the individual skills needed to work within the film industry. On the games course we focus in three different main areas which are art, design and programming. So this will range from everything from filming, lighting to sound and interactive productions. We use a range of software such as the Adobe Creative Suite, um, Maya, we use Construct 3 as well as uh, Unity for our programming. Uh, the language in particular we use for programming is C Sharp at this minute in time, um, as well as other softwares that you're going to use in the course to develop um, different parts of your project. All of this will then lead to your final major project, which is where you get to make a decision on what it is that you want to specialise in. Our main aim is to not only deliver um, practical heavy sessions as well as the backup theory that you're going to need, um, the, the aim of delivering that 
as well as teaching you to be young professionals is to get you onto a university course or to go up and set your own indie dev company or to work as part of a AAA games um, development team. Um, we use as much work experience opportunities as possible to give you a good portfolio before you leave and that is something we expect from all of you. Hi, my name is Martin Hinson. I teach here at the Braintree campus across the games courses that we run here. So as part of our expectations of any student coming to study at the campus is we expect a high quality of professionalism and also maturity as well. So you're no longer at school, um, you're now studying at an FE college where you'll be treated as young adults. Um, uh, what we're trying to do is prepare you for the industry itself. So what we'll do is that we'll give you the skills um, and the knowledge needed to go into, um, the creative, into any creative field and to work for a small uh, company. So the awarding body we use here at the college is the University of Arts London. Um, they're an amazing uh, awarding body who kind of focus around creativity um, and as such every single uh, piece of assessment is project based. There is no final exam as such is there within the, um, the body that we use. Um, it's made up and structured in a certain way. So the way that your course will work is that you have a series of what we call formative units and these are the units as I mentioned earlier where you will be building up specific skills, working towards your final major project, which is what we call summative unit, and that is where your overall grade will come from. Um, and all of those projects are made up of a very similar structure. So the structure for each project, um, especially within the first year, there's some differences for second year, but they run from uh, analysis, research, uh, planning, production and then ongoing evaluation. So that's really important. It's not just a final written evaluation. Um, there are journals that happen at every part of the project. Um, second year, there are a couple of other extras, um, which are the presentation of your work overall, mm -hmm. um, as well as problem solving. Um, you have to evidence how basically you're becoming more of a young professional. Um, but that's how the structure and makeup of the projects work in the course. Yeah, so we follow a matrix that is set by UAL um, and that is what you are marked on specifically to get that final grade. Now, in the event of something like what's happened this year with coronavirus happening, um, your grade will actually be determined by those formative units. So it's just as important to put your all into those units as you would for the final major project. And then you will be marked on those based on that matrix as you would your final project. And it's worth noting finally that each year you get a grade. So at the end of your first year, you will be a, um, given a award and a grade. Uh, same as on a, if you're on a level two program, you would have uh, a grade for that. Uh, and then the second year of your level three, you would get your final grade you would be going out to. Um, they're awarded at past merit or distinction. To give you an idea for people that are not certain about the weightings, if you were to achieve a distinction at the end of our two year level three, that's the equivalent of three A stars at A level. Um, with a merit, you can get into most universities in the country. And also, final note of how that grading comes about, talking back to the matrix that Bill was talking about, um, with the analysis, research, etc., etc., each one of those is graded past merit distinction. Um, and think of it like a game, you have to unlock all of the content. So if you had analysis, research, and planning was all at a pass, but your production was a distinction, well, you'll only be getting a pass. You have to have them all at that level. And that's why it's really important to have consistency throughout your projects and treat it to the same level of kind of, you know, your working ability. And that's a big thing as well. Each of these skills that we're teaching you, they're not just for the sake of passing your course. These are all things that you will be doing in industry. You'll be researching the projects that you work on, you'll be planning them out, you'll be working on budgets and risk assessments before you even start thinking about getting the camera out or jumping onto a computer and start coding your game. And I think the last point to make on that is there'll be elements of course that you're not as strong at uh, or you don't love as much, that's normal. However, if you know, even other elements as Bill said about like researching camera techniques, editing techniques are boring, then you have to question is this the right course for you? Everything we're doing is focusing around your specialism and hopefully your future career. So you should be incredibly enthusiastic and love it because if you don't, you know, maybe this isn't the course for you.
Okay, so some uh, bits of advice that I have for anyone who's looking to um, get into uh, the games industry or um, they're not too sure where to begin on the roadmap to getting into the industry. I think you need to be absorbing as much content regarding your course as possible, um, whether that be as many films that you can see through online streaming platforms, whether it's as many games as you can get hold of um, through any kind of provider. You should also look at the craft that's out there in those down moments where you're just sitting there, you know, dozing off, watching Netflix. Think about how those things are made. Or if you're sitting there playing PlayStation till 2 a.m. in the morning, okay, well, how did they create this? Why am I so hooked? What is it that they have done that's made me dedicate so much time to this? This will give you a good contextual understanding of what is involved within each genre and also how the um, inputs and mechanics work within or between each um, platform. The second piece of advice I can give you is, is that if you really want to be successful um, you need to be doing something related to the industry every day whether that is sketching, playing around with moving aspects of level design within an engine whether that's filming something on your phone, whether that's just editing silly uh, videos that you want to upload to your YouTube channel. Um, if, you want, if you're an aspiring artist, for example, um, I would use platforms like DeviantArt and just regularly draw and post your content onto different social media sites um, and get feedback from your work. Just purely committing yourself every day is one thing, but enjoying it while you do it is another and the amount of time that you put into it will show. Um, you know, camera operators, programmers, they're the ones who love this and they want to make content and do this every day. And that's something you need to get in the habit of. It shouldn't be a chore. It should be something that you want to pick up and go for every day. That's how you're going to be successful.